All right, we are keeping this one really simple because this is a fairly simple pair of truly wireless earbuds. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? These are the Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus. So it's pretty easy to see that the earbuds are really simple because of how simple the case is. It's just this smooth, glossy white plastic here. Then you open it up and there are the buds, also glossy white. So as you can see here, they really don't take up a whole lot of space, but there are a couple of little design cues that help with their feel. As you've probably heard me say in other truly wireless earbud reviews, I love it when there's a wingtip involved. That way it can nestle in a different portion of your ear and they are incredibly secure that way. Uh, now there are a number of different silicone tips there of different sizes and there are also different wings. Uh, I went ahead and got the larger wings on here. That way it can really dig into this portion of my ear and that way they're definitely not gonna fall out. The buds also have an IP rating, which means that they work perfectly in the gym. And I've already used them in that scenario where I was able to pretty much drown out the sounds of the weights falling on the floor and the music blaring above. Uh, and yeah, they worked perfectly in that particular scenario. Uncharacteristically rainy day here in LA. I just realized uh, since I was walking around with the earbuds and that these do have a pretty low IP rating. So you definitely don't want to be going too nuts with these uh, in the wet situations. I don't sweat a lot when I work out, at least not to the point where everything's like drenched. Uh, so I am pretty sure that in the gym situation, these are still perfectly fine. But here, I mean, it's not raining too hard, but I'm still a little bit skeevish about it. These aren't actually buttons, they're just going to tell you where the right and left earbuds go. There is a light above that to show you what the charge level is of the buds themselves, and then there's a light on the front portion of it uh, in order to show you how the charge is on the case. Moving to the back, you do have that USB-C charging port, but you can also use these buds on a wireless charging mat or even on the back of your Samsung device that has wireless charging. Speaking of Samsung phones, those obviously pair the best with these earbuds and provide the most complete experience. The Galaxy wearable app is already installed on most Samsung devices these days, but you can install it on other Android phones if you want to use these buds with those phones. It is on Samsung phones though that you can open up the case and it will show you the battery levels for either bud and also the case. Uh, a little bit like the way the AirPods do when you pair them with an iPhone. But then you can also get into the Galaxy Wearables app and change up a few of the settings like the sound profile, which we'll get to more later, and then the different ways that the controls can be used. So you just have touch sensitive areas on either earbud. You could just tap it for play and pause. You can double or triple tap to go through your playlist uh, and you can hold there for a couple of different functions. You can trigger a voice assistant, obviously on a Samsung phone, that would be Bixby, or you can hold it down in order to turn on the pass-through mode. Here's where picking the right size of silicone tip matters because you do want to get the best seal in order to drown out any ambient noise when you have the pass-through turned off. That's because there's no active noise cancellation on these earbuds. It's not really a feature that we expect to be standard on truly wireless earbuds. Uh, and in the case of the Galaxy Buds Plus, that does mean that these are gonna be a bit more affordable than ANC enabled earbuds. So having the right seal ensures that these have uh, the same effectiveness as let's say earplugs in blocking out the outside world. But then you can hold on the side and you can turn on the pass-through mode. That way you can hear not only yourself, but of course everything that's around you. The mics on these earbuds actually do a really great job of passing through that audio. That way you can have both earbuds, or in my case, usually just one earbud in, pause your media, and then turn on the pass-through mode and you can interact with everyone around you quite effectively. In fact, in my opinion, the ambient mode is so good that I can be somewhere like here in the LA Arboretum and I can have music playing at a low level while having the loudest ambient mode on and it doesn't take me out of my environment. As a matter of fact, it enhances my environment. I can enjoy some music while still enjoying the quiet nature of this area. Seriously though, this is a very useful feature that I think is more and more common in truly wireless earbuds than ANC is. And to be honest, if you have a good earbud in with good media, you're probably not going to hear a whole lot outside of uh, your little space. So pass through ends up being a bit more important, that way you don't have to take them out all of the time to interact with everyone around you. One thing to keep in mind, especially since this update came out that adds an even higher level of ambient sound, uh, while well, the pass-through is really good, as I mentioned before, but the microphones are right here on the bottom, which means that if you're rubbing up against it or if anything is hitting that, that's what you're going to hear with the ambient sound on. Uh, so it could get a little bit unpleasant at times if uh, something just really high-pitched happens right next to these uh, microphones. So be careful with that, especially when you have it at this new extra high mode that is found down here in labs, where there are a few extra features that have have just recently been added to these earbuds. 
I've also found that the latency is very low with these earbuds. Uh, I haven't had any problems playing certain games, especially Dragon Quest VIII, which I've been playing a lot of recently. That's also the case for YouTube videos. There's very little latency, uh, but if you do want to make sure that the latency is at an all-time low, there is that new gaming mode in the labs portion as well. Speaking of tuning, Samsung is not shy about showing that these are tuned by AKG. Unfortunately, there's no Aptex on here, but to be honest, the sound is pretty good. Uh, it's definitely not the best that I've ever heard, but there are a couple of nuances to keep in mind if you are looking for a specific sound signature. You see, there are dual drivers in here, and that means that there's a bit more separation between the highs and the rest of the spectrum. Now, it's really the bass that I find to be a bit lacking here because I like to have not really boomy bass, but I definitely want to feel it when I'm listening to things like hip hop, EDM. The mids could also use a little bit of a boost, but I will admit that as I listen to podcasts and audiobooks with these earbuds, I don't find it quite as, let's say, disappointing as the low response. Somehow the highs are what get pushed the most, and you can actually experience this by going to the other sound signatures on that dial. Especially the clear setting really show that the highs don't quite get to that point of piercing, but you're almost afraid that it might. For small earbuds like these, I am still satisfied with the sound. However, if you're looking for a very rich tone to these, there are definitely some better performing earbuds out there. But there is one thing that I think a lot of people will gravitate to as far as these earbuds are concerned, battery life. I have no idea how Samsung did it, but a slight increase in the battery capacity and maybe some optimizations make it so that these can last for up to 11 hours, which is pretty insane. I don't usually wear earbuds for so long in one session uh, that they run out of battery. I tend to take them off and maybe do some work and get them charging inside of the case for a little bit at least, uh, and then I put them back on because they're topped up with power and I can continue listening. But for the first time ever, I went ahead and just kept one ear in and I tried to see how far I could go just playing things like Netflix, video games, and all that on my Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. I got almost 10 hours on here and no matter which way you slice it, that's a very impressive uh, battery life from truly wireless earbuds. It makes it so that as long as you're making sure the case is charged up, you pretty much never have to worry that the earbuds will just power down in the middle of something that you're engrossed in. I did use these on a short flight, which is one of the main scenarios where you want to have active noise cancellation. Now, while I did think to myself that it would be nice to have those headphones with me, I didn't find myself missing them too much because I was able to enjoy my media on these with enough of a seal to keep most of what was outside quiet. There are long haul flights where I have used earbuds that last for maybe up to five to six hours, and I get annoyed because when I have to take them out after they died, I have to deal with the noise around me while waiting for the earbuds to charge in their cases for upwards of let's say an hour to get a decent amount back. Obviously we've seen long battery life on other earbuds, but I don't think they've ever gotten as far as 11 hours. So honestly, I think that this is a sign that we're going to see a lot of audio manufacturers kind of play to these same strengths. You can have very long battery life from the buds themselves and then just use the case to get a lot of it back whenever you need it. So for $149, do I think these are the best truly wireless earbuds out there? Not really, but there are some people out there who are going to be totally into these because of some of those extra features that Samsung have baked in. You could start your day by putting one of these in, start listening to like a series of podcasts quite literally all day because of the battery life, but to keep from being too misanthropic, you can also turn on the pass-through and pause the media so you can interact with the people around you. And those are my main takeaways for these earbuds. If you are able to get them as a bundle or maybe with a gift card of some sort with your upcoming Samsung device, whether you're getting the Z Flip or the new S20 line, uh, well, these are gonna be a great accessory to accompany those phones. And you know what, because these are so small, I might just have them in a small little pocket in the corner of my backpack anyway. And if I end up traveling to a place and the flight takes maybe 10, maybe eight, 10 hours, these are gonna be very nice to have. But yeah, with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you for watching my review of the Galaxy Buds Plus. Let me know what you think about them in the comment sections down below. Until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.